NHS waiting lists hit record highs last month with more than 7 million people waiting for treatment. The government has announced this morning it's spending £40 million to fund weight loss jabs to curb obesity to help bring down those waiting lists. Health Secretary Steve Barclay joins us now from Westminster. Mr Barclay, very good morning to you. I feel like I haven't seen you for a very long time. But um, uh, in the meantime, it seems waiting lists have grown. Uh, let's talk about those in just a moment. First, what is Wagovi semaglutide uh, and how does it help you to lose weight? Uh, well, it's a really exciting uh, new drug. It uh, potentially allows people to lose about 15% uh, of their weight. It needs to be uh, taken alongside a wraparound uh, service. But what we're announcing today is, is pilots to, to look at how we can roll that out through GPs, uh, roll it out in new ways, uh, and ensure that the NHS is, is innovating and using the very latest medicines that are available. Because we know that obesity is a real challenge in terms of health. It's the second biggest cause of cancer after smoking. Nine in ten type 2 diabetics uh, are overweight. So we know obesity really has a big impact in terms of health. Okay. So looking at how we get uh, that tackled through using the latest innovations on medicine okay. is massively important. And, and many people watching this will have struggled to lose weight, will have struggled to have kept that weight off if they've lost it. Uh, we know that is extremely difficult. So we want to give yeah, people a helping hand. But this isn't a quick fix, is it? Latest. It's not a quick fix. This is for a very specific group of people who are over a certain uh, BMI. And I know part of the part of the reasoning is uh, in order to ease pressure on the NHS, mm. which on your watch, that pressure is getting worse. The waiting lists to be seen in the NHS grew to a record 7.3 million mm. people in April. It is the highest total since NHS records began in August 2007. It's one of your Prime Minister's targets, one of his five pledges to get those down. What on earth is going wrong? Well, we're cutting the, the longest wait, so we made progress in the summer on the two-year waits, getting those below uh, 2,000. In terms of the 18-month waits, which was the second part of the, the recovery plan, we got those below 11,000. Over 90% of those were cleared by the end of March. And if you look at the contrast between what's going on in England and what's going on in Wales, England's got 18 times the population of Wales, but those waits for 18 months or more are around 70,000 patients in Wales compared to under 11,000 in England. So we are getting the longest waits down. You're right, there's a challenge in terms of the overall number. So what we're doing there is boosting our capacity. We're rolling out 160 new community diagnostic centres. Mm -hmm. We're rolling out uh, new surgical hubs. We've got an £8 billion investment in our elective recovery. So we're building our capacity. We're tackling the longest waits. Those longest waits are being addressed yeah. and have come Can I, down. Sorry, but you but have you're right, had we've got work, th more work to do. We're, we're talking, you know, it's like you've just come into government. You've been there for 13 years, and we have the longest NHS waiting time, waiting times, and the or the longest waiting lists since records began. I mean, you, is that, that is not something you can possibly be proud of, or by you know, you're saying well, we're doing a little bit here and we're doing a little bit there. They've got to the record numbers on your watch. Well, we've had a, a pandemic that's had a massive consequence. And if you look yeah. at, say, for example, people... But we didn't start people... at waiting lists of zero. We started before the pandemic of waiting lists of 4.6 million people. Well, if you, mean... look at, if you look at... as a good illustration of just the impact that the pandemic has had. Before the pandemic, going into the pandemic, there was 1,300 or so patients waiting more than 52 weeks. That has increased at its peak to over 410,000. So that's why the pandemic has had such a huge the impact The lockdown was supposed those. to save the NHS. You're now saying that the lockdown has had a massive impact on the NHS. It's damaged the NHS. It's led to more people waiting for an operation or a referral in the NHS. Well, I think there's two different things. The lockdown was about tackling COVID, which was the, the burning platform that the country was facing, and other health systems around... It was to protect around... the NHS. That was the literally other... your slogan. Uh, it, and it, indeed, in terms of the pressure of COVID, and we saw uh, one of the, the, the big impacts we've had in terms of inpatients into hospital has been how many of those patients have COVID. So it puts huge pressure 
on the NHS. But there has been a consequence in terms of the backlogs, not just in England. That's something that is being faced across the UK, but also across the globe. All health systems are facing that challenge. I've drawn attention to the contrast, the progress we are making in England uh, and how much more progress we're making in England compared to, for example, the NHS in Wales. But there is more to do, and that's why we're boosting our diagnostic centres. It's why we've got our surgical yeah. herbs. I'm not sure who, saying who using... it's bad, but it's not as bad as Wales is really the, 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 the flex Susanna, that you think it it's is. About, Susanna, it's about putting it in context. Your challenge was whether this was yeah. about the government's record over 13 years yes. uh, or my point in terms of the impact of the pandemic. And what I'm drawing attention to is the fact that the pandemic has had a yeah. very severe impact and across the UK and across the And let's not lose sight of the fact that the before the pandemic, the waiting list was over four and a half million people waiting. Anyway, Ed has well, other questions for you. Mr Barkey, okay. can, can I ask you about the, um, the, the, the pandemic and the lessons we're learning? Because, of course, we may face, who knows, another, um, uh, another pandemic in the next one, two, three years. You're in charge of the NHS, the health department. Really important for you to learn the lessons, be ready for the next one. It must be very frustrating for you that the public now thinks that former um, government leaders and the Cabinet Office are appearing to frustrate the work of the independent COVID inquiry, trying to withhold um, passing over the information. Actually, a legal challenge for you. Don't you just want to get on with it and learn the lessons? Well, you're right. We do need to, to learn the lessons, and that's why the government set up the inquiry. It's why we're fully supportive of it. But just to give you an example, Ed, from yesterday, I was meeting with Dr Tedros, the Director General of the World Health Organisation, discussing how we work across jurisdictions on better surveillance to pick up pandemic risks much sooner, looking at our sure. sharing of data so that where we are faced with those sort of circumstances in the future, when we're looking at things, for example, uh, at our borders, we're able to share data But the between public, countries. Mr Barclay, think that you are trying... Uh, I don't mean you, I'm sure you're not. The public think the Cabinet Office are trying to frustrate the inquiry. There's a legal challenge. Doesn't that really um, not help you at all? Well, the coming up is clarifying a, a legal point and, and that was something that uh, the courts will decide. So the decision on that won't be taken by the government. But it your will be colleague, tested the science minister, in... Mr Freeman, said you're going to lose. Well, it will be tested in the courts. I know, and the but courts why are you make... doing it if you're going to lose? I mean, surely from your point of view, I'm talking about you at the health secretary, don't you just want to get on with this? Well, I think actually the inquiry yesterday praised the Department of Health in terms of the disclosure that we'd made. And, but there's a, a point that the Cabinet Office is testing and that will be decided by the courts. But your so wider point, Ed, is one that I fully agree with, which is we do need to learn the lessons from the pandemic. That's why, for example, with the G7 health ministers, we were looking at how uh, we share information better, have better surveillance, looking at the clinical research. So one of the things the G7 health ministers agreed on was there was lots of siloed research on long COVID that different countries were doing and looking at how we bring so that the research inquiry together. Is, uh, so the inquiry is praising the Department of Health, which is a good thing, um, but they are very frustrated with the Cabinet Office. Well, there, as I say, there's a, a legal question, and I'll yeah. defer to legal colleagues who will test that. Uh, but we fully support the inquiry. That's why we've said it. It's hugely important, particularly to those of your viewers who lost uh, loved ones, that we get the lessons out of the inquiry. That's why we've set it up. But it's also important that we're working with international partners, such as the, w, uh, the World Health Organization, uh, through the G7 health ministers, how we have better early surveillance, how we look at the risks from uh, animals into human health, uh, how we look at uh, better sort of primary care, uh, what is the data sharing particularly important yeah. around travel restrictions. So there's a lot of lessons that come okay. out mm -hmm. of the pandemic, but I we've think also Mr. got Barclay, to innovate. Mr Barkey, they, they need you back in number 10 as Chief of Staff to get this sorted out and then you can get on and get the inquiry done. <laughs> uh, Steve Barkey, thank you very much indeed for joining us.